Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number 36 in our legendary, most exceptional, new and improved Arduino tutorial series. So I will need you to pour yourself a nice strong cup of iced coffee, that straight strong black coffee poured over ice, nothing else is needed. And it is quite refreshing. What I also need you to do is get out your eLEGO Super Starter Kit. What? You don't have one? Check out the description down below. Click on the link. You can get this for 35 bucks on Amazon. You get a boat, you get the Arduino and a boatload of components. And seriously, it is kind of helpful if you're using exactly the same hardware that I am. So as you're learning, you're on everything exactly the same as I have it. Much more likely that things will work for a new person who is learning. What we are going to learn today is we are going to learn to use a tilt switch. A tilt switch is a switch that switches from on to off. Off as it tilts and that allows you to see something like uh, let's say that something is turned upside down or turned over so let's say if you had a robot if the robot flipped over you need to know that the robot needs to know that it's on its side and that way you could cut the motors off because let's say that if it turned over on its side and all of a sudden started getting wound around something something could be damaged or imagine on your car that if your car flipped upside down might be nice to shut off that gas tank just saying you know just saying it might be nice so there's a lot of things in real engineering projects where you need to know roughly and simply what the orientation is. And so for today's most exceptional project, you will need, you will need first of all for me to get out of your way, and then you will need your Arduino Uno, you will need your breadboard. If you look in that eLEGO kit, you will see a component that looks like this. This is the tilt switch. You will need a red LED and yes, a green LED. As you know, we normally only use red and yellow LEDs. Green LEDs are saved strictly for special occasions. Today is my birthday. Yes, today is my birthday. So in honor of my birthday, you will be allowed today only to use the green LED. You will also need two current limiting resistors. Okay, let me move all of this nonsense out of the way. And let's just talk very simply about how the tilt sensor works. So here you can see the tilt sensor again. Okay. If I can get my hand out of the way. It's kind of like a can with two leads in it. So let's look at what that actually is doing. You've got two leads like this, and then you've got a can like this. And then very simply, there is a little metal ball in that can. So if I am in this orientation, the switch is what? The switch is closed. It is on. Okay, if I tilt it over to the side a little bit like this, what is going to happen? That ball is going to roll this way, and then the switch will be off. So we go on in this orientation and off in that orientation. It's pretty simple, right? So some of the good things about this is these sensors are really, really cheap. Also, they're very, very easy to implement that if you go back and look at our earlier lesson on, I believe it was lesson 34, where we were talking about how to do a simple on-off switch in your project, you would use the same approach, but instead of having a push button, this one's on or off state depends on very simply whether the uh, device is tilted or not. So they're cheap and they're very easy to implement. If I were to say uh, what would be the downside of them, you can imagine that on this, if you start vibrating it, even if it's in this orientation, if you start getting vibration, that this can start moving up and down and opening and closing. So you've got to keep that in mind. If you're going to do something like put this in the car, you've got to think a little bit about the effects of vibration. But that is beyond the scope of what we are going to talk about today, because today we are going to see if we can get this thing hooked up. And oh my goodness, did I lose my switch already? 
Okay, getting all my little components back over here, and I have found the switch. Quite a relief. Okay, so to put this together, you just plug the switch into your breadboard, and just make sure that the two legs of the switch are in different columns because you don't want the two legs of the switch to be connected together. And then one leg of the switch I'm going to hook to GND over here on the Arduino so it is connected to GND. I always like to use a black wire for GND when I can, but as you know I've just got kind of a pile of wires here so I can't always use the right color. And then to power I like to use a red when I can so that other leg, that other leg of your tilt switch will be connected to pin 2. And I have no idea what that little noise was that we just heard. All right, so now we have a switch. Now, if you remember lesson 34, we showed you in lesson 34 how to incorporate a switch by pulling a little trick where we can put an internal pull-up resistor using a series of commands. We're going to use do that little trick because that way we don't have to add another resistor. And so let's just go ahead and switch over to our code view, and let's start coding this thing. Okay, so first up, I have what? I have a pin. What do I have? I have, and we'll make it an integer variable, I have a tilt pin, and that was pin what? That was pin 2. All right, then I'm also going to read from this, so I'm going to have a tilt val. I'll call it, you can call these anything you want, but make them mean something so if someone looks at your code, it sort of makes sense. So the tilt val, I'm not going to put a value in because I will read that later. Now we will start doing a little trickery here. We have to do a pin mode on pin 2, which is what tilt pin. Okay, and it's a what input because we're going to read from it. Now this is the trick that we showed you in 24 that we can pull in a pull-up resistor and power it if we do a digital write of tilt pin and we want to make it high. Okay, if this does not make sense to you, go back and look at those earlier le lessons on buttons and pull-up resistors and all of that. But I will move on on this one. We always like to turn our serial uh, monitor, serial.begin, the trusty 9600 baud rate. Okay, now the code's going to be pretty simple down here. What do we want to do? Well, tilt, tilt val is equal to is equal to digital read of what? Tilt pin. Okay. And then what do I want to do? I want to serial.println tilt pin because I want to see what that value is, right? So what do we expect? In the up position, the switch is closed. And for this configuration from lesson number 34, a closed switch is what? It is a zero. And then when we tilt it, it will be an open switch, and then we will expect a 1. Okay, well, let's come over here. Let's call up our serial monitor. Uh, let's see. Where is my serial monitor view? That is a pretty good one. And let's hold our breath as we download this code. Oh, not happy. Not happy. Why is it not happy? What is all this nonsense? Okay, let's look here. Okay, there. All right, come back over here. Boom! Okay, it downloaded, and now I'm reading two. Well, wait a minute, that switch, right, it's got to be either zero or one. Zero or one. How could I possibly be reading a two? Okay, tell me, debug the code. I'll give you a hint. I deliberately put an error in there to see if you were paying attention. Pause it and leave a comment down below telling me that you caught my error as I made it. Okay. And why do I put this error in? Because I teach and I watch students doing coding and I see certain mistakes that they make. Okay. What did we do? Yes, this was our mistake. We did the digital read of tilt pin into tilt val. Okay. But then what did we print? We printed not tilt val, we printed tilt pin. And tilt pin is always 2. That's the pin. We don't want to print the pin. We want to print the value coming from that. So what should we have done? We should have said tilt 
val, right? Now let's try downloading that. Boom! Okay, now let's look. Okay, we're getting a zero, which is what we expect for a closed, right? That's what we expect for a closed switch. And now let me get further out of your way. And now let me begin to tilt this. Okay, you see as I'm tilting it, I'm about horizontal, but the ball is still downhill. And then as I go this way, giddy up! Did you see that? Giddy up! Let's watch this. We get horizontal, we tilt a little bit more, and it goes one, saying that this thing has been tilted, this thing is rolling over. Boom! Okay, now this is your homework. I want you to give a visual display because if this was out being used somewhere, you don't have the serial monitor, you don't have someone sitting there looking at it. <clears throat> so what I want you to do is build a visual indicator of tilt. And so if you are in the upright position, I want the green LED to be on. Everything is good. But if you're tilting like this, I want the red LED to come on. That's your homework. Pause the video, go do it by yourself, and then once you are done, come back and we will finish it together. Okay, boom. All right, we are back, and let's go back up to the larger view, and let's do this thing very quickly. This is going to be easy. We have our two LEDs, so I will start with the red one. Okay, I'm going to put the the left, uh, my left leg, the left leg of of the red LED into column 35 and then the other one one over and then I'm going to get a little wire here and I'm going to go from there to let's say pin I'm going to give a little bit longer wire and I am going to go from the 35 over to pin 7 okay so I've got pin 7 connected to what is uh, the left leg or the long leg of the LED. And then I'm going to come down here and the short leg is going to go to the current limiting resistor. The short leg is going to the current limiting, limiting resistor. And then notice the other leg of the current limiting, res limiting resistor is jumping over this trench. And so that will not be connected. This lower leg will not be connected to the LED, which is what we want. Then I will put in the green LED. And the green LED will go in column 40, the long leg. Okay, column 40 into the long leg. I will get another wire into uh, the long leg of the green LED and I will put that in Arduino pin 6. This will also need a current limiting resistor so I will again hook the current limiting resistor to the short leg current limiting resistor to the short leg of the LED the green LED again jump across that trench. Alright so do you see do you see let's see Okay, it's trying to focus. The short leg of the green LED is hooked to the current limiting resistor. The current limiting resistor jumps across the trench. And now tell me what the only thing is that I still need to do in the circuit. I need to ground these two LEDs, the, short, the uh, bottom leg of the LED. And you guys, I've gone through so many of these, you should be able to sort of follow along. If you don't, go back and look at my early lesson about how to hook up an LED. And then I will come to a GND. I do have three GNDs, three grounds on the Arduino. And what that means is, is that I can do all of these. I can do all of these with the grounds on the Arduino. I don't have to hook up another rail, uh, make a ground rail. So then I will come to the bottom leg of the green LED's current limiting resistor and I will also bring that over to GND. Okay so I've used up all three of my GND's but that's okay because that is all I'm going to need. Now we need to come back over here in code 
Okay, we're going to come back over here in code and we will go to a nice code view here. And so what do I need to do to this software? I need some more var variables, right? I have now a red pin for the red LED and the red LED was connected to pin 7. Okay, and then I have a green LED again, or green pin, green pin, again in honor of my birthday today, which is equal to pin 6, we said. I need to get those all the way in, pin 6. Okay, does that look good, pin 6? And now I'm not going to be doing any reading there. Okay, I will need to do my pin modes, and so I need to add a few pin modes here. I'm going to do pin mode. Red red pin is a what? It's an output. Okay, pin mode. Green pin is an output. All right. Now those are set up. I still am setting up that switch. And now what do I need to do? Well, I can still print that out if I need to for debugging. But now I need an if statement. All right. If, what did it read in the normal position? Do you remember what it read in the normal position? The switch is closed, and so it reads 0. So if tilt val, oh, look at that. Getting happy little birthday wishes uh, from everyone here. Wonderful. People are wishing me a happy birthday. So if tilt val, and I probably should put quotes, if tilt val equal 0, then what do I want to do? I was going to put that mistake in there, but I won't put you through that torture. What do you have to do? 2 equals. If I did this, it would self set tilt tilt valve to zero and it would never work. All right. What do you have to do in a conditional? Equal equal. If tilt valve equal equals zero, then what do I want? I want to digital write. Okay, if it's up it should be green and so green pin and I want to set that to what? High. Now in this position what do I also have to make sure that I do? digital right red pin low. Because you got to remember, if you go to the tilt condition, red's going to come on. When you come back to the untilt position, you got to remember to go off, go back and turn the red one off. So you got to clean up what might be going on there, because you got to remember this thing loops. Okay, now what's the other case? If tilt val equal equal 1, what does that mean? That means it's tilted, and in that case, what do I want to do? Well, I want to kind of do the opposite, so I'm going to come here and I'm going to copy these things, Control C, and then I'm going to come here and I'm going to Control V, and then I am going to clean up my spacing, and then in this case you want to turn the green off, so I'll make it low, and you want to turn the red high, so I'll make it high. Does that make sense? I think this should work. So now let's download this. <laughs> Boom! Okay, and look at that. What happened down here? Can you see what happened? The green LED came on. And man, in person, that is a beautiful, beautiful LED. That is a beautiful LED, but it kind of it kind of doesn't show real well on the camera. It doesn't show real well on the camera because it's too bright and it doesn't pick it up. So now let's slowly start tilting. Let's slowly start tilting. And then let's see what happens as we tilt. Boom! What happened? You're getting the red warning light. Tilt, 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 untilt. Okay, we're clean. Giddy up. Did you see that? Boom! This thing works. So now what you have is you have an ability to incorporate a tilt sensor into your project. Okay, did you guys make it to the end of this? Did you guys make it to the end of this video? I always wonder if anybody makes it to the end of the video. So I'm going to give you a little clue here how you can let me know that you've made it to the end of the video. I will show you. This is a picture of my granddaughter and she's on her way to see me. This was taken 
on the other side of the world in an airport. And she's so excited because she's getting on the airplane to come and see me. So if you've made it all the way to the end of the video, let me know by typing Gabriella, Gabriella, that's her name, in uh, the comments. That'll let me know that there's at least someone who makes it to the end of these videos. Like I've got these videos that are 50 minutes long. You know what the average view dur duration on my videos is? Three minutes. And these are 30 to 50 minute videos. Average person watch watches three minutes. If you're watching, let me know. Type in Gabriella. Give me a comment on, were you able to do this project by yourself? Were you able to do the homework by yourself? Is anybody actually doing their homework? Or are they just copying me? What happens when I'm not here? You got to know how to do this stuff on your own. Think about giving us a thumbs up. Think about subscribing. Make sure you ring the bell so you get notifications. And then let's also uh, share this with other people. Okay, appreciate your time today. Paul McCorder from TopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later.